everyone, welcome back to Show Me How to Win. We're at PAX East 2020 and we are checking out Heart of Crown in Japan Amaze booth. All right, so uh, Heart of Crown, this is one of the, the most popular title at Japan Amaze, in Japan Amaze catalog, right? So today I'm gonna talk to Lindsay. She's been working with Japan Amaze for the last four years, demoing and getting to know all their games. So she's gonna give me some good strategy tips on how to win at this game. Lindsay, for those of them who are not very familiar with Heart of Crowns, can you give me a quick introduction? Yeah. So Heart of Crown, basically the story is that the Emperor just died and we're trying to hire one of these princesses as the royal advisor and trying to get to them to the throne. And in order to do that, you need to collect resources and build up your territories and collect succession points in order to win. I played this game a while ago. I remember it's a deck builder. That's kind of like the base mechanic. But there's a kind of a weird twist to how uh, cards work. There's like a direction system. Can you talk to, can you talk to us about that? Sure. So when you're playing down cards, you also have, want to pay attention to the arrows on the cards. So there will be yellow arrows on the side, and that just means that you can place another card down. Now some cards won't have any arrows, so you won't be able to place more uh, more down. But some will also have two, so you can place down below it and uh, keep going placing down cards. So you can chain cards that way. Right, because you actually have very limited amount of uh, actions you can do, even though you have a hand of cards. So unlike most uh, deck builders, you play all your cards and you do whatever it says. If you don't have the right combo, you can only get to do one thing. You have to basically pick one card to play. However, if you build your deck really well, you can sort of chain the arrows. You can do this and then this and then this, right? Exactly. Yeah, so you always want to, if you notice that you have a card that doesn't have any arrows on it, you want to play it last. So you're able to play the other ones with the arrows. So she already gave me a good basic strategy, play the ones that don't have arrows last. Now, let's talk about the different princesses. You have to sort of get enough points to even get them to come to your corner. And then once you have the princess, then you can start to try to win, right? So tell us about the princesses. So the, the princesses itself, they cost money to in order to buy them. So at the beginning of the game, you're trying to buy enough money to pen, buy them. But then once you do, they, they kind of stay out of your deck and they will collect the succession points. And once you're under them, they'll start collecting those points. But thankfully, all these princesses do something different. They have their own unique ability that will help you do certain things. Um, and it's always good to, you, uh, to know what each princess does. For example, Lane and Xi'an, they will give you extra turns for everyone who else already bought a princess. So she's really good to buy once everyone else has a princess. Don't buy her first. And then Fulmeria is a good, uh, good princess to buy quickly because when you buy her with farming villages, um, normally when you buy a princess with farming villages, you get negative points. But with Fulmeria, she doesn't have to do that. So you can buy her really quickly without upgrading to cities and large cities. So let me ask you this, what if you sort of have your eye on one of the princes? For example, the one that gives you uh, points for the farmings. But somebody else, so you gear your deck towards it, and then somebody snagged that away from you. What are some of the things you can do to sort of um, make, make up for that? So that's the good thing is that even though like you can gear your deck towards a princess, a lot of them will also use those same cards as well. So even though you won't be able to buy Fulmeria really quickly, there are other ones that will make up for that, like giving you more succession points, or uh, making everything cheaper, or being able to use multiple cards on, on a turn. Because I remember that's what happened last time when I played. Like somebody wanted to buy this card, and then I went and bought it, just thinking because it was like the cheapest card. And then the person was like, oh man, I, I built my deck, yeah. but I didn't have the money, so now you took it, so like the person was upset. So, all right, so that's not, it's not the end of the world, somebody takes your princess. Now, there are also cards that really work well together. So can you give me some examples? So, like I said before, when you're playing arrows, you want to make sure that it will keep having arrows. Now, some cards will uh, not have any arrows, but let you draw cards. But then, that's kind of pointless, because if you drew cards, you won't be able to play them down again. So that's why you want to chain this one with cards that have two arrows. Like, for example, I have a trading ship that doesn't have any arrows, but a post horse with two arrows. So if I were to play this under it and draw two cards, I can keep playing down more. Are there any other uh, cards that work well together? Um, another card that can work well together are um, uh, buying the wishing wells and uh, alchemists. When you're uh, playing deck building games, I like to getting uh, drawn cards because then you can have your whole deck out in one hand, even if you have a bad hand to begin with. And then wishing well is a good to get rid of uh, 
uh, useless cards, like we start with apprentice maids that don't do anything, you can use that to get rid of them and have a better hand. All right, there's something I forgot to ask you. So at the beginning of the game, when you're buying cards, in this game, you basically flip, flip the card over, and then once you have like eight different ones, then you stop, because there's actually more than eight types of cards in here. So once the stack is out, uh, you could get other cards. So what are some of the cards that we should go for at the beginning of the game? The beginning of the game is basically you want to try to start getting cards that will either give you more money, let you draw cards, or let you upgrade your uh, farming village. So for example, you have the city development card, which you can pay to upgrade your farming village for a city, which is way better because it gives you more money to spend, and the farming villages are negative, but the cities aren't any negative points. So you can also get, you might also pull out a super expensive rare card, which there's two in the deck. You wouldn't want to buy that right away because they're super expensive, but they also are, you want to get them quickly before anyone else because there is only two. Only two. All right. So what about towards the end of the game? Like, say we're not focusing on those rare cards, but some, maybe what are some of the good things to do, strategy to uh, embark on towards the end? To Because it is a race, right? It is a race to how many points? So you need 20 points to win, but then every other turn or every other player gets one turn to also get to 20. And if they do in that one turn, they then it's the race to 30. But... Um, once you do have a princess and your deck is kind of filled with all these uh, cards, it's not really good to buy more because then it could clog your deck when all you need is sort of succession points. So it's good to buy cards that will let you banish cards, which is basically taking them out of your deck, which the adventurer does. They basically you pay a coin to banish a card, and that will help you make a smaller deck near the end. So all you have to ha all you have to do is succeed your succession points. Those are some great tips. Okay, so. Now we play the base game. We want, we want more content. Japan Made does not disappoint. There's lots of content. So tell me about the expansions. So the base game does come with more than you can play with. So it, the, the, there, uh, there's 10 market cards you play with, but then the base game comes with like 18. So you can have a randomizer deck to play with it. Then the expansions come with an extra princess, with an extra princess power. So there's one expansion that deals with curses, which are basically like uh, blank cards that kind of fill up your deck, but then they give you a certain advantages. And then another another uh, ad, uh, expansion would be like Fairy Garden, which is our standalone expansion that will give you another rare card to add, and it will also let you steal succession points from other players. Cool, Lindsay, thank you so much for showing me how to play uh, Heart of Crown, showing me how to win, talking about all the different strategies. You really gave me a lot of tips. And thank you guys for watching.